What's up everybody, this is Jason for Better Body Warehouse, here today to talk to you about the different types of protein that are on the market and helping you find the one that's best suited for your goals. Protein is a very detailed and complex subject that honestly, most of the information you really don't need to know. You need to understand the basics and the principles and what makes each protein different both in price and in quality to choose the correct one for you. The first one, the most commonly used protein on the market is whey protein. And for good reason, whey protein has been shown to build or assist in building lean muscle tissue for all types of sports, all types of training regimens, and it's really been uh, kind of validated time and time again. The problem is with whey protein is a lot of people think that they're all created the same. And honestly, it's like comparing apples to oranges. They are just very, very different in their nature. There's three different types of whey proteins that are currently on the market, the most common ones. There are some outside ones, but these are the three that most of us see when we go to a nutrition store or when we talk to our friends. So the first one's gonna be First one's going to be whey concentrate. Sorry for my handwriting, it's probably not the best. But whey concentrate is the one that we all start with. The reason being is because it's the most affordable. So of course we're going to go for the most affordable type of whey that's on the market. At our younger years, we're better able to utilize whey concentrate than we are later on down the road. I believe that that has to do with lactose tolerances to some degree. Myself, I could never have lactose, even though I, I did, from the time I was a kid, and it always gave me stomach problems. Well, whey protein will cause stomach problems. Whey protein concentrate will cause stomach problems, and even people that have just slight issues with lactose. You don't have to be fully known as lactose intolerant to experience stomach issues from whey protein concentrate. So, although it's a lower priced whey protein, it comes with a cost of pain and suffering for my guess would be four out of ten people that use it. And not everybody experiences that, but it will give a lot of people issues if they have no idea what they're taking. And then they'll just blame it on protein in general instead of blaming it where it's actually due and that's being on the lactose that's found in whey concentrate. So don't Disregard protein if you've had this issue, if you're using a protein. Check the label, and if it does say weight concentrate and it's causing you some issues, you're gonna move on to the next one. So the next one that is uh, one of the most recommended ones in our store for the, for the bulk population that shops with us is gonna be whey isolate. Whey isolate is going to be a little bit thinner when you, when you have the powder. You, the whey concentrate tends to be a little bit thicker, whey isolate tends to be a little thinner. And with whey isolate, the best part about it is that they strip almost all the lactose completely out of it. And when they do that, um, even though they can't put lactose free on the actual label because there's still trace amounts in there, I'd say 98 times out of 100, people aren't going to have issues with it if they have issues with lactose. There's still that one or two that are extremely sensitive and will experience some problems with isolate because it does have some lactose. But isolate's a little different also in the sense that it's 90% protein by weight. So the raw powder without flavor, without other things included, is 90% protein. So on a 10 gram scoop size, you're gonna get nine grams. And that's important to note because with concentrate, it's actually typically 80%. Just so you don't forget. Super important. And the reason why I've kind of highlighted it and done that is because you're getting an extra one gram out of every 10 grams when you purchase an isolate. So isolate typically comes more expensive in cost, but you're getting a higher quality protein, and you're also getting 10% more protein on average per scoop. 
Now this changes though. This changes when you add in things like fiber and essential fatty acids and flavoring and those kinds of things are really gonna change the total amount of, of protein that's in a container. But it gives you a good indication. So whey isolate is our go-to for, for a lot of customers because we know how prevalent lactose issues are in today's society. There's another benefit to whey isolate versus concentrate that might serve better for you in specific times, whereas whey isolate is quicker absorbing than whey protein concentrate. So it's fast absorbing, and that's great. You know, it's, it's uh, much needed for post-workout when we need the instant amount of protein to get to our muscle strings from what we've, uh, what we've utilized through our workout. But it's not necessarily that important at other times in the day. So if you're gonna use it at other times in the day, the reason is, is because of the fact that there's no lactose and it's a cleaner source of protein. There's a third protein that's become more prevalent as of recently, although we don't sell a lot of it just because of a couple things, the high price tag, and it has a really bitter, sour taste by nature. And that is it's gonna be hydrosylate or hy hydro, hydro whey, or there's a couple different names for it that people people call it. And what that does is they're taking the peptides. And they're shrinking those peptides so that your body's able to better receive it than it is from, from other proteins. How much? There's not a ton of research. It's starting to come out that shows that it is. But the problem is, like a lot of things, if it just doesn't taste good, the general public is not going to use it. And also, if it's going to cost too much, the general public's not going to use it. So we're trying to find a product that is best fit and that you're gonna use regularly and that the more consistent you use, the more results you're gonna get. So we don't have a lot of customers coming in um, and purchasing the hydrosylate because it's not necessarily the best option for them, both financially uh, and in terms of their satisfaction per time that they take it. But it is important to know that it does exist. And you're actually seeing a lot of whey protein isolates now slipping in a little bit of hydrosylate to make it a better a better protein and they're getting uh, one brand puts in seven percent hydrosylate 93 percent whey isolate and when you do that now you've got some of that peptide quick broken down protein as well as the isolates so if you find that and you can stand the taste that's a good option to go with as well so those are the three types of whey protein and without going into too much detail or getting too complex to overwhelm you guys hopefully i haven't already that gives you some general ideas on what you should look for, okay? There's also another popular product on the market that has become more prevalent in the past maybe three years, although myself, I've been taking it for probably about 10 years, and that's gonna be casein protein. Okay, so most labels show casein protein. Casein protein by itself, there's uh, potassium caseinate, uh, I've seen sodium caseinate, I've seen calcium caseinate. Those types of caseins that used to be common years and years ago are not the actual ones that, one that you're gonna need for the purpose that most people are using casein. What you're going to be looking for is going to be micellar casein. Probably spelled that wrong, but anyways, micellar casein is the one that you're gonna be looking for. Okay, now all the labels on the front say casein, and so it's important that you turn these labels around and you make sure it doesn't just have regular casein, it has this micellar casein. Okay, micellar casein is important because it's the true nighttime protein, where it has a absorption rate of amino acids of roughly five to seven minutes, or I'm sorry, five to seven hours, Five to seven minutes wouldn't be very long at all. So five to seven hours is a good portion of the amount of time that you sleep. And that's important because you want a slow drip amino acid pool going on 
to your muscles while you sleep so that it causes aided, re aided recovery and you're getting maximum absorption of those amino acids. Uh, if that's getting a bit scientific, we'll take it back to the old school when bodybuilders used to wake up at 3 a.m. and eat a meal because they hadn't had protein in a long time. This prevents that, okay? So make sure if you do pick up one of these, which I do recommend and I myself personally use, you do go for a micellar casing. Now, a lot of companies are kind of cutting corners to keep the cost more effective where they're putting micellar casing but they're also including a couple other types of casein in there, such as the calcium caseinate that I had mentioned before, or they're putting in milk protein isolate, which contains casein in there, and they're using that as a second ingredient. The question is, and it's unfortunate because I'm not able to answer it without calling the companies directly, is how much of it is micellar casein, how much of it is regular casein or milk protein? On a label, if it's listed first ingredient, second ingredient, the difference could be only 2%. You could have 51% micellar casein, 49% milk protein isolate or regular casein. So we have to be careful of that and we just have to be aware of it. It's not a big deal, it's not make or break. Uh, if it keeps the price $10 more affordable and you're able to fit it into your supplement budget, then it's worth it. Obviously we wanna make sure that this is affordable for you and that you can continue to use this plan for a long time because consistency is the key to results. So these are gonna be your daytime proteins, typically. These are gonna be your nighttime proteins, the casein. Uh, regular casein, though, to note, is really only about a two hour, roughly, absorption rate. So unless you have micellar casein in there, it's not technically a super slow release protein, okay? Now, you're gonna see also combinations of the two that companies put together that consider a time release protein. Okay, time release proteins are great and they're super um, fun. There's tons of different flavors and they are effective, but you have to be careful of the, of the time release proteins because the way that they typically use is going to be whey concentrate. So if you have stomach issues, that whey concentrate is going to it's going to kill you. So be careful that if you do buy a product that has three to four different types of protein that you are aware of the concentrate and that you are sure that you can handle that much lactose at a sitting. The next proteins that we're going to talk about is going to be the plant-based or vegan proteins. The first one being one that you guys have all heard of is soy protein. Huge red flag, okay? Soy protein is estrogenic by nature, and uh, it all, you know, they've done stuff saying that it raises estrogen levels higher than birth control. We have to be very, very careful of soy protein. Now, there's soy isoflavones outside of soy protein have some uh, health benefits as well, but you always have to assess the risk versus the reward. And in soy protein's case, risk is far too great over reward. I know I definitely don't need any more estrogen going on in my lives, life now that I have a wife and two daughters. That's enough for me, okay? So I'm being very careful to steer clear of any outside sources of soy, with the exception of once in a while some edamame or some tofu or just, you know, just occasional sources of soy. But we definitely don't want soy protein directly, and we definitely don't want things like soy milk in our diet as well. Outside of the typical issues that most commonly talked about uh, estrogenic effects of soy protein that people tell you to steer clear of, there's actually a bigger issue. And the bigger issue is that companies are using soy protein for profitability purposes. Very, very misleading, especially in the multi-level marketing world. You're seeing products that are marketed as sports supplements with the main protein being soy protein. No person that has educated themselves in sports performance is recommending soy protein to their clients. Now, why are they using soy protein for profits? Well, because raw material costs of soy protein are roughly half of raw material costs for whey protein or casein protein. So their profitability doubles, and that's why you're seeing it so much. And, and unfortunately, when you have aggressive sales marketing tactics, they're going to get you to believe whatever they can, no matter how inferior the product is. To me, that's irresponsible, and our customers need to be aware of it. And so, 
you know, if this makes a few people mad for reading this, too bad, you know, that's it, doesn't matter. So those, the soy protein is gonna be the one that we steer clear of, but there actually is some good plant-based proteins on the market that can be beneficial to you, especially somebody like me that is lactose intolerant. And those proteins are rice protein and pea protein. So there's, there's more, uh, there's cranberry protein, there's quinoa protein, there's a lot of different ones, but these are, the, these are the ones that you're seeing now come up more and more often. Here's my favorite, rice protein. Okay, I use rice protein roughly 60% of the time as my protein source because of my lactose issues. Rice protein is, uh, there's some studies being done on it that show that it's as effective as whey protein uh, in sports performance. So they even have a rice protein isolate on the market that you know, I think is phenomenal. Um, the the plant-based proteins are newer, and so when anything's new, they're not as refined, they're not as perfected. So you're not gonna get the most enjoyable drink out of these types of drinks. Rice protein, typically chalky, okay? It tastes good, but it's chalky, and some people don't like that texture. Pea protein, it's, uh, it tastes like peas, so it's, it doesn't taste that good, and uh, they've, you know, they, they've got some chocolate flavors and vanilla flavors, but honestly, it still doesn't taste that good. So you have to get that understanding before you buy these products that they're still new, and there's still going to be some issues with them that need some perfecting. So those are the types of, uh, of plant-based proteins that, that we typically see uh, in a store and we see customers requesting. Again, to, to go over these two, rice protein is my favorite because it does have some studies validating its effectiveness as much as at least whey protein concentrate. So yeah, I'm not able to take isolate as much as I'd like because of my stomach issues being extremely sensitive to lactose, but this gets me pretty close and I get no stomach issues from it at all. I get no allergens from it at all and it's, uh, it's very beneficial. Um, now pea protein, so I will say, a good thing about pea protein is that when you mix it with other types of protein, such as uh, Sun Warriors protein, is that it's not that bad. And uh, you know, as long as it's not 100% pea protein, we tend to be able to flavor it well enough to mask some of that smell. So in synergy with other proteins, which I believe they use rice, pea, and uh, cranberry protein, you're able to get a pretty good tasting product and still include some of that pea protein. So I really like eating the plant-based proteins, uh, but you know I'm not a I'm not an all-or-nothing kind of person. So I'm using plant-based proteins a lot throughout the day. I'll use an isolate uh, as a, as my post-workout every once in a while if it's just an extremely hard workout. And I uh, I use casein micellar casein before I go to bed, and that program to me works works really well. There beyond these, the other types of proteins that you will see uh, on the market is beef protein which is fairly popular, but again, a lot of people have, have a hard time consuming liquid beef, essentially. Uh, there's soon to come out salmon protein. Uh, there's lots of different proteins on the market, and it can get overwhelming and confusing. So I hope that this conversation that we just had gives you some insight, but doesn't make you freak out about the information and allows you to choose the correct info to get the products that you want. If you guys have questions about this, you're more than welcome to call us. We'll walk you through it and get the right protein for you. Or you can email us. You just go to the site and you can go on the forum. There's lots of different ways that you can reach out to us. At Better Body, we find it important to speak with our customers and not just be a vending machine, so to speak, where you just make a transaction. We actually want to engage with you. We want to talk with you and we want to get you on the right program for you. So if you have questions, feel free to utilize those resources. That's going to end today's talk. Thank you guys all for taking the time to watch this YouTube video, and uh, we'll see you next time for the next show. Take care.